Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. He's not going down without a fight. By far, this is a council from hell. Warren Mayor Jim Fouts blasts the ruling, barring him from running for a fifth term. And that's just the beginning. And that tops our news at five. Good to have you with us today. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill at a news conference that lasted well that over an hour. Fouts lashed out at political foes, the Warren City Council, and even a law firm. Clean up Mar McDonald here. was there for all of it. Joins us now live. Mar, he sounds pretty angry. Well, Kimberly, he's angry about a lot of things. He's angry about term limits. He's angry about the Michigan Supreme Court. He's angry about the state court of appeals, angry at the Warren City Council, angry at the law firm that has been successfully representing the Warren City Council, as well as the press. My life is my job. But the courts say he's term limited out of that job. A unanimous decision from the Michigan Court of Appeals says Fouts does not qualify for the ballot. The Michigan Supreme Court says there's no issue here and won't hear his appeal. The Supreme Court, maybe by not acting on this, or the Court of Appeals for sure now has said to elected officials throughout the state of Michigan, it's okay, you can put something sneaky. The mayor spent an hour railing against the judicial system while touting what he says are his accomplishments, paying special attention to the racial and ethnic makeup of people he's hired. I appointed my first African American in 2008. While simultaneously savaging the Warren City Council. By far, this is a council from hell. It has sued me and made Life difficult for my department heads for four years. Today's press conference was, according to council members, par for the course. We've heard these rants from the day we got elected. He had a temper tantrum and wouldn't and canceled our swearing-in ceremony because he was mad. Council President Pat Green, who is now running for mayor, says there were no surprises for him from the mayor's comments. I think what it expresses is that this is a change for the city of Warren. We're on the cusp of new leadership coming into Warren, and I'm. For one, I'm excited about it. Back here live, this press conference happened on city hours at City Hall using city resources, and still some elected officials, like those who sit on council, were barred from entering while handpicked supporters were allowed to attend. Kimberly, Devin, back to you. Yeah, okay. Well, Mara, Warren voters, they approved term limits back in 2020. Do you remember what that margin was? So, Kimberly, it was, it was big. I mean, I think yeah. we're talking about 68%. And I also think it's important to point this out. The mayor and some of his allies last election cycle tried to get another ballot proposal going in Warren that would change up term limits again, mm -hmm. which would allow him to continue serving. Uh, they were never able to get the signatures needed to, to put that on the yeah. ballot. Yeah. Right. Back to big you. Big changes on the way for the city of Warren. Mara, we appreciate it. Our other top story here at five. It happened in a flash security camera video showing an arsonist setting a fire inside an Oakland County liquor store. Just took a few seconds for it to start burning out of control. And now police are looking for the man who did it. It happened May 10th at trademark liquor and check cashing on North Perry Street in Pontiac. Megan Woods is there live tonight. Megan, was anybody hurt? No, Kimberly, that's the good thing. No one was hurt. And actually, when you drive by, you wouldn't be able to tell that this is the building that was on fire until you walk up and you see this sign in big letters saying arson reward. Waterford Township Fire says the building itself is fine, but it's video of what happened inside that has people who drive by stunned. Oh, it could have been other people in there. You could have hurt someone. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard feels the same way. Makes me angry is what it makes me. This person obviously had no concern about that and may have the same kind of callousness about doing violence to something else in the future and it could affect you. So get ahead of it. Let's make sure this doesn't happen again. So take a good look at this surveillance video. Someone enters the liquor store pouring some sort of substance on the ground and then flames. Now. Look at these photos of the damage. 
all the battles that everybody that owns a small business is going through, then to have somebody literally throw gas on the fire, um, uh, it's just really a sad and frustrating thing, and we want to catch this person. Arson investigators believe the man used a knit cap from the store counter to ignite the fire along with that substance, then ran out of the building to a nearby street, possibly leaving in this dark-colored four-door ram. If you don't like a business, don't go to the business. That's the quickest response to some business that you don't care for. Yeah, the sheriff says his, his message really is that this shouldn't have happened. There is no reason that someone should do something like this. And if you recognize the man in that video, you are asked to call 1-800-44-ARSON. Again, there is a up to $5,000 reward. We also have that information up on clickondetroit.com. Live in Pontiac, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Okay, Megan, thank you. Uh, an immediate recession, delays in getting Social Security checks, just two examples of what could happen if the U.S. defaults on its debt. Today in Washington, though, more optimism that a deal can get done in the next week ahead of a crucial deadline. Christy McDonald live in the newsroom with the sticking points that remain between Republicans and Democrats. Christy. Yeah, Devin, it all comes down to the negotiations and details like that. It's centering around new work requirements for people who receive government aid. But let's go ahead and take a look at the movement today. Negotiations for Republicans and President Biden's team today near the Capitol getting closer to crafting a bill to raise the debt ceiling by June 1st so the government can cover its spending. That's the day Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the U.S. would run out of cash. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy sounding hopeful for the first time today that a vote could come next week. Look, we're not there. We haven't agreed to anything yet, but I, I see the path that we could come to an agreement. And uh, I think we have a structure now. And Everybody's working hard and I mean, we're working two or three times a day, then going back, getting more numbers. A couple items both sides are wrestling with, imposing future budget caps, clawing back billions in unused COVID money. But the most controversial, Republicans want to put on extra work requirements for people receiving government aid, something the president has said he is open to, but some House Democrats say is a hard stop. The shaky months-long negotiations put fear in investors, playing out in lower numbers on Wall Street, and concerns that even if avoided, this could push the U.S. into a recession. And while this isn't our first debt ceiling cliffhanger, legislative battles go back to the 1960s, this current fight is being compared to 2011 and concerns that we're more politically polarized than ever before. A couple of things to remember when we're watching all this playing out. Raising the debt ceiling doesn't authorize new federal spending. It just allows borrowing to pay for what Congress has already approved. And a side note here for you, the Senate is officially on recess starting tomorrow until after Memorial Day. The House is set to be in recess the week of Memorial Day. But they know they could all be called back if a deal is in place. Some else to look at. Markets ended up 115 points today, riding a little bit of a wave of optimism around a deal. Devin? Just nice to be talking about optimism. We were not really using that word much just two to three weeks yeah, ago. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, all right, Christy. All right, let's turn things now to the weather forecast and a live look outside right now from our Southfield Sky Cam. You can see it's a, a, a tad bit hazy. That smoke is from wildfires all the way out in western Canada. And after a very chilly start yeah. to the day, things are looking up. Yeah, sure is. Uh, Ron Hilliard in for Kim Adams tonight, Ron. And Kimberly and Devin, we have been seeing some of that wildfire smoke drifting in our direction for the past few days. This is what's happening on the radar. Nothing right now. This is going to look different tomorrow afternoon around this time. So we have those mostly sunny skies. Of course, it looks a little bit hazy out there. Things looking pretty nice. We have those temperatures at this time in the mid 60s all across southeast Michigan. 64 in Detroit, 66 in Howell, 64 in Pontiac, and we're coming in at 65 in Adrian. You'll notice that those wind speeds are right around 5 to 10 miles per hour. So this evening we will be seeing those temperatures tumbling just slightly. It's going to be cool tonight, finally getting down into the 50s around midnight and a little bit lower in the upper 40s overnight, but it is not going to be as cold as it was this morning when many places saw those temperatures around freezing. So the big story, we have those umbrellas in our cars and with us as we're traveling tomorrow. We will need them. Some of that rain lingering into the weekend, but looking better. And then the temperatures, they will be on a roller coaster ride. If you want to 
see where those rain showers are right now. Of course, that'll be coming up in a few minutes, but you can get it right now with the forewarned weather app. You can download it, get accurate forecasts for your neighborhood and track it wherever you are, whenever you'd like to. All you have to do is look for WDIV in the app store. All right, Ron. It's an extremely important number, and it has Detroit Mayor Duggan lashing out. What it is and why the mayor says he can prove it has no basis in reality. Also, there is a lot more than just a new racetrack and a new location. Ahead at 5, the new elements you aren't going to want to miss at this year's Detroit Grand Prix. Nick. He was suspended, nobody knows why, but then reinstated at the last minute. I feel good. Um, I can't say enough about the D7 community, my staff, the students. Um, I'm home. Dearborn Heights Principal Aaron Millette back on the job will bring you to the emotional first day of school at the end of the school year.